Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to analyze a very interesting game. This was played in Prague Chess Festival between Jan Christoph Duda as white and Santosh Birit as black. In the moment they played this game, it was the last round of the tournament and Birit was leading this competition, but he, need, he needed to get at least a draw in this game. So let's see what happened here. Duda plays d4, queen spawn, and uh, Birit plays knight f6, c4, and then e6. Knight f3 is the most popular move in this position, and here black plays d5, transposing to a queen's gambit, knight c3. In this position, black plays bishop b4, and now we are in a Ragos in defense. Actually, knight d7 or c6 are probably more popular moves in this position, but Ragosin is also a good option for black here. And in this moment, Duda plays this line, queen a4. Actually, I had not studied this move before, and that's one of the reasons why I decided to analyze this game in my channel more deeply. So in this moment black has to play knight c6 because they need to protect the bishop on b4. Actually that's one of the ideas of this move queen a4 is to bring the knight here. So now this pawn won't be uh, will be blocked. It means that black won't be able to play c6 to protect the central pawn or to play c5 to create problems with white's central pawn. So that's the idea with this queen a4. White plays e3 now normal development and black castles here. Queen c2, bringing the queen to a better position now, and then rook e8, improving the rook, bishop d2, developing the bishop, and then a6. Always useful, controlling b5, and now white decides to ask a question to the bishop, so a3, and now the bishop has to decide what to do. Um, B it plays bishop d6, and then white castles queen side. And now we have opposite side castlings on the board. This means that black is going to attack in the queen side as white is going to attack in the king side. Very typical in these positions are pawn storms. It means that we advance the pawns very quickly, so we are going to try to open lines against the enemy king. Even if we have to sacrifice a pawn to open lines, it usually is fine in this kind of positions. And finally, we need to say that the first one reaching the opponent's skin usually wins when there are opposite side castlings. Okay, well, in this position, black continues developing, bishop d7, and white decides to block in the queen side with c5. The bishop has to go back to f8 now, and then white plays e4. Something good with the c5 is that now white has some space in the queen side and the center. Something bad is that uh, there is no more control with d5. So now after this trade, d takes, knight takes, e4, and then knight takes, queen takes. Uh, this square is more or less weak. It means that black can try to use that square for knights or probably bishops in some point. So this move c5 has some good and some bad things. Well, black plays knight e7 now, trying to get that square we set. And then white just finishes development, and they play bishop d3. Black plays here, g6, and now they have some fianchero here in the king side. This has some small problems. One of them is dark squares, but actually as long as the bishop is there, it should be okay because the bishop helps a lot controlling those weak squares. And the other problem is that now it's much easier for white to break and open some line for the rook and for the pieces. So that's the situation with this g6. Uh, white plays here knight e5, improving the knight, and black continues with bishop c6. Duda moves the queen to f4, attacking f7 and beat it 
brings the knight to f5, blocking the queen and also creating some threat on d4. Here there is a nice move for white, uh, he plays g4, the, the rook is hanging now, but actually it's not a good idea for black to take that rook. Let's see, after bishop takes rook, then white just takes the knight, the bishop is threatened now, so if black moves the bishop, then f takes g6 and this position is lost for black. Notice that uh, white is threatening this, also uh, white is threatening some things with the pawn, the knight is there and the bishops are also very well in that position. The rook is coming over g1, so this position is absolutely lost for black, so taking the rook is not a good idea. Another move for black could be uh, just a knight takes d4, but this is also bad because then queen takes pawn and this is almost winning the game. King h8, knight takes g6, destroying the structure in the king side, and then queen takes threatening checkmate here on h7. If black protects that, then it's fine because then we have this bishop g5, and this is winning the game because we are threatening almost mate here. So it doesn't work to take the rook and it doesn't work either to take the pawn on d4 so in this position we did just place bishop h6 knight takes e 6 was played threatening black queen and in this position uh, black plays pawn takes knight but let me show you what could happen after bishop takes queen then white just takes the queen and after bishop trades then the rook takes the knight, but then the knight on f5 is hanging, so pawn takes knight, and this is winning for white. So after knight takes a uh, bishop on c6, black has to play b takes c6. In this position, the queen goes to e4, and now black has to trade on d2 because white is threatening the knight, and this knight is protecting this bishop. So they have to trade dark squares bishop, and remember what we said about the fianchero? Now dark squares will be a little weaker. So let's see, the knight goes to e7 here, actually something interesting, I think it was knight takes d4, uh, it was a little risky but it seems fine, white could play bishop c4, pinning here, but then e5, protecting the knight, white could still play something like a4, and the position could be complicated, but it seems something playable, this mm, capture on d4. Well, in the game he goes to e7, and then Duda continues playing bishop c4 because he doesn't want a move like queen d5, trading queens. Notice that white, uh, now white has some very good attack possibilities in the king side after they uh, break on h5, so they don't want to trade queens by now. Black plays knight d5, and then, as we said, h4, the queen goes to f6, and then h5. If there is an attack in the side, we already know that we have to break in the center so we can distract our opponent. So that's what Bidit is doing right now. He breaks on e5 and then uh, Duda goes with the king to b1, bringing the king to a safer place. The rook goes to d8 and then the other rook goes to e2. Now they are taking this pawn, that's the idea. The knight goes to f4 but let me show you what could happen if black took on d4, then they could receive mate in 3 moves. A very nice mate in 3 moves. So queen takes rook, and then after king g7, h6, and this is checkmate. So black cannot take here on d4, and that's why b did place knight a4. Rook e3 was played, and the knight goes again to d5. h takes, h takes, and then rook e h3. That's what we wanted, to control the h file so we can create some threats over there. In this position, uh, bd tries to escape with the king to f8, but let's analyze what could happen after e takes d4, attacking white queen. So try to think about this position, it is white to move, there is a very strong idea for white here almost winning the game, so focus and try to find the right way to play here. Okay, the right way to play in this position is 
g5. The idea is to deflect the queen away from the protection of h8. Black can play two moves in this position. They just they can just go back to g7 and keep protecting, or they can just trade here. Rook takes e4. Let's see after queen g7, white can just play queen h4, threatening queen h8 and mate in some moves. Then black can still go with king f8, but then queen g3. Remember, um, this knight is controlling c7, but we can get rid of the knight whenever we want. So the king won't really have a good way to escape over here. That's the idea of this queen g3. And um, if the king goes back to g8, controlling again this square, then queen h2 is very strong, threatening again rook h8. Now if the king goes to f8, we just remove the knight and rook h8. The king can go to e7, but then queen takes pawn, rook check, and this is winning for white. So queen g7 doesn't work here because queen h4 and rook takes e4 doesn't work either because then pawn takes queen, we are threatening mate on h8 and probably the only move is knight takes pawn but then rook check and rook takes rook. So that's why this move here, e takes d4, is not working. So bd tries to escape king f8 and here duda just decides to capture one pawn. Black cannot do too much in this position. And here black plays queen takes f2. This is probably the last mistake of the game. Here rook f3 was played. The queen takes on d4 and then queen takes g6. Now we are threatening mate here and black is lost. Black plays knight f4 blocking the rook but queen f6 is also is still very strong. After queen e4 checking then bishop d3 is winning the game. Now white is threatening checkmate with rook h8 and white is also threatening black queen here. Let's analyze some important moments of this game. In the opening black plays this Ragos in defense and Duda decides to play this queen a4. It's an interesting move. So I think this is an interesting moment of the game. Some moves later we have this position on the board and Duda decides to castle queen side. So now we have opposite side castling on the board. Remember what we said about this kind of positions? Pawn storms are very typical and very useful and the idea is to open lines against your enemy king and also remember that if in some point you need to sacrifice one pawn to open lines is usually fine in this kind of situations and finally another important moment in this game is in this position when white just plays queen e4 and now black is forced to trade dark squares bishop and remember they have the fianchero here so they need the bishop controlling or protecting dark squares so once the bishop is not there those squares are weak and the king is not as safe as it was before so this is the game i wanted to show you today i hope you have enjoyed it if you think the video was good give me likes so i can know it so that's it thank you for watching and see you in the next